Okay, we're about to make garden beds here. I've got just basically the length of the greenhouse, so 20 foot. These are about a foot high or 30 centimeters high. It's kind of higher than most beds, but uh, we don't actually have any subsoil here. It's just rocks, so ended up building this fairly heavy. Next step is to paint it. Now, it's untreated lumber. I'm spraying some oil-based sealant on this, this thing. It's an oil-based stain. I'm using an airless paint sprayer, which is like a super-powered spray paint can. This is definitely a great way to do buildings or anything really big. It just gets done so much faster than a roller or a brush. There, there are some downsides. You can see I have to wear a respirator because the, the oil in the air is definitely no good for your lungs. And there's certainly a lot of overspray in all directions. I ended up spraying the bottom first. I do want to get all sides because it's untreated lumber. So in, in our climate, untreated lumber, you still get about a decade before the stuff starts to rot. But I, I would like this to last last longer than that. So I'm trying to make sure that I've covered every possible surface of, of the thing. Uh, being right next to soil is pretty hard. Maybe I should have used uh, treated lumber. If you're in a warmer climate, probably treated lumber would be required. There was some extra, so here I'm uh, tipping off. So just sopping up the excess with a brush, filling in the low spots. On the rocks, I was afraid of the dirt dribbling down into the rocks. So we put down some cardboard and then uh, to let air up, we just have some holes. Now here's our dirt and it looks fairly decent. It's overloading my truck, certainly. We realized it's locally made dirt and it's got an enormous amount of silt in it. So the structure is not really good. It packs pretty badly. So we, we're going to add some perlite. The big construction bags are nice. And then channeling Cody's lab here, I'm going to add some charcoal. I had some charcoal from uh, getting rid of some trash wood. Uh, so the, the charcoal will actually suck up nutrients. So here I'm preloading it with a little bit of fertilizer, about just a handful of uh, uh, fertilizer. And then I'm trying to, trying to get it colonized by microorganisms. So added just a little bit of dirt on there and then soak this down and let it sit for a few days for the microorganisms to try and colonize that. Not, not totally sure if uh, any, either of these are required. I do know charcoal will suck all of your, uh, uh, your fertilizer out of a, uh, a garden bed. We, we discovered this the hard way. So uh, th th there it is, broken up into reasonably small pieces. And then we started shoveling basically directly out of the back of the truck. Pure labor savings when you don't have a big crew, uh, every little bit uh, helps. Th this is one reason we're doing this at this stage of the project. So eventually there's going to be you know glass on the front here, a plastic cover. Putting the dirt in at this stage lets us just shovel directly through the front of the greenhouse, directly into our bed. So basically just starting off gently layering the perlite and the, uh, the charcoal and trying to make sure that they're somewhat, somewhat mixed. It's not really that important because we're going to have to essentially till the bed uh, a couple times before it really get to planting. So essentially it's just, there's a long process of just shoveling dirt out of the bed, dropping on, you know, layers of perlite. The little garden bags uh, go away really quick. So the, the perlite, the, the goal here with both of these is just to kind of open up the soil structure so air and nutrients can kind of move around in, in the soil. Uh, the, the problem with silty soil, it packs down really badly. So it looks like a lot of perlite, but it's just the top layer. Once we mix it in, it hardly looks like there, there is any in there. Uh, it ended up uh, doing another another little batch of charcoal. This is basically all, all the charcoal I had. Probably uh, could have put in a little more charcoal, in fact. Uh, at some point, we're, we are definitely going to be mulching this pretty heavily for the first few years, because we got to get more kind of organic matter in there to prop the, the little grains of soil apart. Hopefully we don't have to swap out the entire batch of soil because it took it took hours to basically shovel it all out of the back of the truck. You know, it's it's a it's a 20 foot long bed. There's definitely some volume in there. Fertilizer soaked charcoal is basically our, our main way of getting actual fertilizer, actual nutrients uh, into the into the soil. Uh, if we we're doing this fully organic, we would probably have to uh, let it let it sit for a few years. Has have some good rich compost ready to go. Uh, certainly planning and adding compost. We've actually started saving some uh, some kitchen scraps to do compost. 
So logistics of doing this stuff, you notice I, I tried to mix things as close as possible. Here's a place where I actually kind of messed up the, uh, my first batch of charcoal was quite a ways away from where we were uh, putting the dirt together. So I, I had to put it in buckets, and uh, if you can just shovel directly out of one container, directly into another container, that is definitely the, uh, the right way to do these things. So you can see we're just about out of charcoal, just about as the last of the perlite, uh, and we pretty much have, uh, have the, uh, the bed full. So it, it all has to get mixed together, raked around. You can see the perlite just vanishes pretty quickly. So there's our finished dirt, and it packs down really effectively when it gets rained on, so that's, uh, that's a little scary. But uh, we tested it, and uh, in four weeks we grew some radishes and spinach, so it, uh, it works. Next episode, we're going to be putting some plastic on the front.